Thank you. Uh, so today we will speak about uh, basics. So why basics? Because uh, we already had like several meetups about APM itself, but uh, I saw that community is not so big. So we decided to make one basic presentation about IPM itself, how to set up it, how to work with that, to increase the size of our community. So we hope that you will also join to our community and will be contributing, or we will try to help you if you will have any problems. Uh, so let me uh, speak about uh, what we'll do today. At first, it's our first uh, meetup and also it's our first presentation in uh, tall set circles. Uh, live brand. Uh, we will do much more uh, presentation. It will not be only about test automation. It will be about completely different topics. So please follow us. Maybe you will also find something interesting. Uh, soon we will have much more presentation under this brand. OK. So about me. Uh, my name is Pavel Strongin. I have uh, a little bit more than 10 years experience in uh, information technologies. I worked as a uh, system uh, engineer. I worked as a developer. I worked as a uh, system administrator. Uh, I worked with such companies like IBM, IPM, Yandex, uh, Lazada. And now I'm working here in Circles Life as QA lead. Uh, I, initially, I'm from Belarus. Not so many people know where is it. That's why I put a map here. Yeah. This is Russia, this is Poland, and uh, Ukraine uh, downstairs. So just a few words about uh, Belarus itself. So we have uh, beautiful ca castles, we have beautiful girls, we have, uh, we have uh, last bisons in, in uh, Europe or Euro Asia, and we have the last dictatorship in Europe. <laughs> OK, so uh, tools that we will use today. Uh, of course, it will be APM uh, because uh, here and in Lazada I use Ruby, so mostly I will use Ruby Mine and Ruby itself. Uh, I will tell you from the beginning that it doesn't matter uh, in which language I will show it uh, today because it's completely the same on all languages and all the realizations of APM libraries. Uh, also, we will speak a little bit about Allure reporting. Uh, about simulation with Gini Motion and about simulation with Gini Motion on Google Cloud. And of course, I'm using Mac for everything. OK, so let's speak about Appium itself. So before Appium, uh, we had, of course, many different uh, frameworks to test mobile de devices, mobile applications, but uh, mostly you had to add the SDK inside your application. So every time you want to test or you want to change something, you need to recompile the application. So Appium was made to uh, uh, follow the next philosophy. So apps shouldn't require including any SDK. So you should be able just to get any application and start your testing, as you're doing with everything else, like with browsers in Selenium or command line or API. So you don't need to change anything on developer side. You can just take it and test it. So you don't need to recompile your application. Also, you should be able to use your test practice frameworks and tools. So you, you can uh, choose any language you like. You can use any tools you like and use it for testing. So you shouldn't be limited. For example, like with Espresso, you can use only Java, and you should use only uh, IDEs that provided by Google. Or uh, if you're testing iOS, you're limited to use Mac OS and Xcode only. So IPM gives you a freedom in that. So you can choose anything you want. Also, IPM is an open source and free project with a very big uh, community right now that contributes a lot. So if you check the IPM repository like three years uh, ago and right now on GitHub, there is a huge amount of small projects already added to IPM. So APM uh, right now, it's not only one server. It's a lot of small projects, a lot of models, and a lot of plugins that helps you to do usual stuff very quickly, very easy. So everything already invented. You just need to take it and use. OK, so let's speak about uh, main features of APM. So first, it supports uh, both platforms, uh, Android and iOS. Also, it's not limited to it, so there are also better so to test Windows some way. You can find a special driver to do that. Also, 
Uh, Appium supports all the types of applications right now. It's native, hybrid, and web application. So you can uh, test native application. If your application have web view, you also can do it. If you need to test on browser and mobile, you also can do it with uh, Appium. Uh, it supports any types of device, so you can do real devices, you can do simulators, you can use clouds, anything you want. Because uh, for Appium, it doesn't matter which type of device connected to your machine. It just should be connected. Uh, you can use any programming language. So for all the main programming languages, you already have the library that supports uh, communication with the Appium server. If you're using some kind of uh, not popular language, it's not so dif difficult to implement it because Appium itself is just HTTP server that follows WebDriver protocol. Yes, the same protocol as used by Selenium. So if you're somewhere trying to use unpopular language for test automation, never do that. <laughs> you, you still can uh, use Appium. Uh, because it's following the same protocol as Selenium, you can use Selenium Grid. Uh, same way as you used it in Selenium. Who knows what is Selenium Grid? Okay, uh, so I will notice that Selenium Grid, it's a tool to parallelize your test. So if you want to uh, run your test not one by one, but uh, in parallel, Selenium Grid uh, is uh, one of the tools that you can use. Also, you, you can use any other tools. You're free to do anything with Apple. And yeah, I noticed that it's quick start, and you will see today why it's really quick. You don't need a lot of knowledge to start testing with Appium. It's very easy, it's uh, basic, and we will see it today. So, our requirements. You need to put this server into your office. No, I'm joking, of course. Uh, requirements, once again, any programming language. Java, Ruby, Python, anything you want. Any operation system. Appium works in uh, Mac OS, in uh, Linux, in Windows. Uh, currently, I'm using only Mac because I'm doing testing for both Android and iOS. And with iOS, you couldn't move from uh, Mac anywhere. So you always must have your Xcode. Uh, so if you want to test iOS, you should use Xcode. If you want to test Android, Appium supports Android starting from uh, SDK version 16. Before that, they had a different uh, driver call, call it Selendroid, but probably you don't need it anymore. It's too old. 16 version is below Android 4. Uh, and you need uh, to install Node.js because Appium implemented itself in Node, so you need Node.js just to run the Appium server. Uh, OK. So how does it work? Uh, as I told, uh, Appium is just a HTTP server, but it doesn't work by itself. It also needs something. So between your test and uh, real uh, mobile application, there is two main things. Appium server that uh, accepts uh, your client request, just web driver protocol here. So then depends on the type of automation you use Android, iOS, or type of the driver, because for Android, we will discuss it a little bit later, we can use different type of driver. It will choose a special plugin to use with this driver and install a special uh, server that works only like a proxy to use internal API, uh, API of platform. So in case of Android, it will probably will be UI Automator or UI Automator 2. In iOS, it will be XCUI test. Uh. So there is two types of Appium servers right now. Uh, actually, it's one, but uh, one is UI with additional features. So UI server you can download in Appium IO. There is a download link. So it will be UI version with uh, inspector uh, possibilities. Or you can just install it in your uh, Mac. If you use Mac, you can just run these three commands, and you're getting Appium server running. How does it look like? OK, I need to close it for a second. OK, so this is Appium Server UI. So it's just a small tool. You press one button, and it starts the server. That's all. And same you can do it just in command line. Just run Appium. And it also starts in Appium in command line. Uh, so 
probably for uh, writing the test, you will always use the UI one for uh, CI integration. So for continuous integration or running on Jenkins, you will use the command line one because it's easy to script. Uh, there is no difference, so it's still UI version just running the uh, command line version. Just has additional features. We'll speak a little bit later about that. But one more notice you should uh, know. If you're using UI version, check the version of APM server inside because they release uh, UI version a little bit later than real APM. So if you need any new features, you should use command line first because UI will be released like several weeks after. Okay. Of course, if we have server, we need a client. IPM clients can be found here. I put QR code, so if you want to see the full list right now, you can do it. Oh, sorry. Can I click on it? Yeah. So, Currently, it's implemented for next languages. Uh, one, once again, so if you're using something not from this list, some why, you still can use it. Just HTTP request and it will work. Okay. Okay, next thing we will speak, it's about how to set up uh, Apium and how to work with that. So. That's why we will need desired capabilities. It's something uh, uh, that's called APM config. This is a way to tell APM what are we testing, where we're testing, and how we're testing. It, it can be set up on both uh, server side or client side. Uh, depends on you, so how you will set up your environment. But there is uh, several uh, desired capabilities that should be sent always to set up your uh, session to the server. It's a platform name where you specify iOS or Android. Platform version, uh, device name, where you specify how to find your device. Automation name, this is the name of the driver. So for iOS, it will be almost always XUI test and uh, application pass where to get your application. Everything else will be done just by your IPM server. So it will find your device, it will find your application and will install your application on the device and will start it. There's a, a lot of uh, possible capabilities, so you can find all in the documentation. So there's a huge list. Prob probably you can uh, set up everything you need, and even, I don't know. I, I, I don't use the half of these uh, capabilities, but maybe if you will need it, if you'll find it helpful, you can use it. So some of them universal, some of them only uh, works with uh, special operation system like UDID. For example, if you want to work with a real device on iOS, you should specify UDID to connect to it. Oh. Okay. Uh, so one of the desired capabilities is automation name. So possible variants for now, it's a possible drivers that you can use for automation of uh, your application. For Android, it's Apium. It's uh, previously called UI Automator. Uh, it's one of the first drivers for Android that were used by Apium. Uh, the only problem with that is that it's outdated. It will not work with Android 8. So, so if you need to test new devices with Android 8 or API 26, you should use UI Automator too. Also, express driver available, but it's still in beta. So if you want to use it some way, uh, be careful because nobody guarantees that it will be stable right now. Maybe in the nearest future they will release the full version. For iOS, currently is the XUI test available for all the applications that you will use. U UI engine for applications that develop it with UI engine. Actually, I never heard about that before. I just found it in possibilities of IPM. Okay, so to set up your uh, capabilities, you need to get your device ID or your device name. Uh, I will show you how to do that. If you're using uh, Android, you just need to execute ADB devices minus L, 
and you will see your connected device. Uh, my device name is this IP address because I'm using simulator right now, the not real device connected. If your real device will be connected, it should show your name of the device. So uh, if you want to use IPM with your device, you just copy this part. No. This part and set it as device name. For iOS, there is a... Uh, uh, Two variants. If you're using a real device, you should use iTunes to get your UDID. So you just open iTunes and it shows your device UDID. If you want to use simulators, you need to execute the command xcrun simctl list, and it will show all possible simulators that exist in your system. So you, you can choose any device you want and any operation system that install it currently. You can manage it by Xcode or by this command line tool, it's very powerful. You can create any combination of device and operation system you need. Also, you can create custom uh, devices with custom names, but it's a separate topic because there are a lot of possibilities. So right now, what all, all you need is just this name and this UDID, and you will be able to connect to this simulator. Apium itself, uh, by itself will start the simulator, will install the application, and if you need it, you also can kill the simulator after the test execution. So, let's try. Uh, I will, uh, just for trying, I will use the IPM Ruby console, it's ARC. Uh, it's just a very simple implementation of, uh, Ruby, uh, of uh, IPM client. So basically it starts the Ruby command line and importing the uh, IPM library just for, you, for me to show you how to execute commands and just to try anything new. Because usually if you have a huge framework and you want to try something simple, you just need to isolate your code or put a breakpoint or something, Arc or any implementation like that can help you to try your new features very fast. So. I will bring it back. So I'm starting Epium server. Yeah, it started. I have all the device connected. So then I need to set up my uh, uh, capabilities. This is all capabilities I need. I'm using Android platform. I use device name. This one, I'm using applications that are uh, located in my folder, and I'm using the UI Automator 2 driver. So let's try. Arc automatically set up the connection to Epium, starts the driver. So uh, right now, Epium installed the all uh, applications that it needs, like proxy server, Epium driver on my device, and then installed the application itself and started it. So now we see. Uh, that our application started, and we have a command line here, so we can just try to send several comments. So, uh, let's start from something basic. Uh, of course, uh, when we're working with uh, UI, uh, we want to get some kind of uh, IDs or any locators that we can use for our uh, uh, elements identifications. So, uh, Apium also can uh, show your UI as XML documents, so it will use the uh, same pattern as you used uh, in uh, Selenium. So I can use source, and I will see the all XML files that presents my current screen. Yeah, it's very big and uncomfortable to use. So there is some helpful stuff like page, and it sh will show me all the elements that has ID on this page. So if your developers made a good job and uh, assigned IDs to elements, it will make your life very simple. So for example, I want to click on the Get Started button. And I already can see here that I have element that has text Get Started and has ID Get Started Layout button. So all I need is just to say ID. Copy this ID. Uh, 
and I'm getting Selenium element. So uh, as you can see here, element is just Selenium web driver elements, the same way as you worked in Selenium. There is completely no difference. It uses the same Selenium library as you used in your Selenium. So it means that you can do any uh, same actions as Selenium can do. So you can uh, get its text. You can click on it if you want. And it will click. Also, Appium have a lot of uh, me helpful methods that uh, you can check uh, here. So there is a huge amount of methods available. So you can uh, work with alerts directly. So you don't need to find the ID of alert. It will automatically will find, detect that it's uh, alert and will do any uh, action you need. Uh, you can get any information about your application. For example, if you're using uh, localizations in uh, uh, your application, so you work for different markets, so you have different languages. So you can use application strings. Uh, application strings. Actually, just a file of keys and values, so it's some, some kind of dict that uh, use it inside your application for localization purposes. So Instead of using real text for, use, using, uh, for searching an element, you can use the, its ID or key that will never be changed. So even if your text will be translated into another language or some way designers will ask you to change the text, you don't need to fix your test because you can use the, uh, the key of this text that's also used by developers in, inside the application. Uh, also, you can uh, collect uh, uh, data about uh, performance. For example, I will copy this. So you, you can uh, get the current information about your performance of your application. So you're using package name and uh, information you need. So you can use it. the user. Usage currently is 0 0.3, currently 0 0.1. So you can monitor the performance of your application during test execution. And you don't need any other tools for that. So you, you can use Apium for that also as well. If some way you forgot that uh, which uh, properties you set for a driver, you always can get it back. If you don't remember which platform you're using, you also always can check your platform. Uh, so it can be helpful if you have one framework for both, mob, uh, for both application for Android and for iOS. Uh, because for now, I, I write only one test case for both platforms. I'm not co copy pasting my uh, tests everywhere. So it, uh, it helped me just to have one library for test cases and just to separate libraries with locators how to find these elements on Android or iOS device. OK, well, let's move. OK, so let's speak about Apium Inspector. It's a tool also implemented by Apium. It's already included in uh, Apium UI server. And it helps us to much easier find the elements. So how does it look like? So here on the server, you can see the Start Inspector Session button. You just click on this button. Yeah, did I click it? Ah, OK. It's opened <laughs> another screen. OK, so you'll see this screen. Uh, it allows you to set up the same session as I did with R, uh, but with UI. So it's much easier for you. So you can see you can edit uh, your capabilities anytime. I already have a preset capabilities. so. It's completely the same that I used uh, in Arc. So it's also Android, same device, same application. 
uh, automation name, but also here I set the uh, new command time timeout because default timeout for Appium is about 60 seconds. If you're not sending anything in 60 seconds, it will close the session. So probably if you're doing something long be between your tests, it makes sense to set up this timeout. So Appium will not stop the session. Okay, let's start. Let's try to start the session. It will do completely the same thing. So it will install uh, all this uh, support application. So like uh, UI Auto Automator 2 proxy and uh, my application on the device. And we'll init the session. So here we can see completely same screen from here, but also now it's attached to our source. So I can click on the element and find its ID, XPath, and all the settings of these elements. So it's a very fast way to get your elements, especially if it has ID. Sometimes, especially with Android, uh, if uh, your developers using fragments instead of uh, se se separate layouts, so it may show that you have two screens, one under another. So in this case, you will not be able to click directly here because it will think that the screens on the background is actually on the top. It's some kind of Android problem. You cannot do anything with that. So in this case, you will still have to use your uh, XML just to find your element. Also, if you found your element, you always can send the tap action. Wow, interesting. <laughs> ah, okay. And it will do the same. Also, it allows you to check your XPath. So if you're trying to not use this long XPath and you want to make it short, you can uh, use the search element, choose the strategy, XPath, for example, and put your XPath uh, here and search. So if it will be able to find your element, it will show you all available elements by this XPath. So you can use Appium Expector just for checking your XPath. Is it right or not? So you don't need to put it in your framework first, execute, get the fail result, and try again. OK. Uh, let's continue. So the other way is how to get your identifiers. Of course, you can use uh, Appium Inspector. It's like most universal tool right now, so you can get its elements from Android, iOS. But if you like other tools some way, you can also use any other tools like Xcode uh, Accessibility Inspector. It's uh, part of uh, Xcode uh, IDE. You can use Android Studio Inspector. It's also part of Android SDK. Uh, you can use Macaca. It's Alibaba tool for their automation, but it also can uh, find and record all your actions. So maybe it will be helpful for you. Uh, also, you can use source code if you know how to read Java code or uh, Object C code for iOS. You can use source code to get your uh, locators or set your locators. So if you will want to set your identifiers by yourself or you will need to ask your developers to put some kind of identifiers uh, for your application, you need to set next things. For Android, you can use resource ID or content description. Because in some cases, developers cannot set resource ID for element. There may be some kind of limitations in, the impl in the, their current implementation of software. So in this case, they always can't set content description. Appium still will be able to find it. Uh, for iOS, you have the three types of uh, accessibility identifier, value, and hint. All three of them uh, can be found by Appium. And in Appium, you can get text from all three of them. So you can get values from all these three elements. So you can use it as some kind of help for your automation. So for example, uh, Appium has very big problem with iOS when you need to get the text label text. Sometimes you just cannot get text from text label. You, it seems like basic operation, but uh, uh, implementation issue on iOS side that they don't want to fix. So in this case, in Lazada, we implemented uh, things that we put the text from any text label inside one of these uh, accessibility uh, uh, parameters, and, we, and Appium was able to get it from there. 
So you still can test, but not directly. OK, if we want to test hybrid application. So then we need to know how to use WebView. For Android, you, you, if you're using a real device, you will need to ask your developers to allow access to the debug functions of your uh, Chrome. Because uh, the Android like to do protection everywhere. So if you're using simulators, you don't need to do that. If you're using a real device, you need to unlock the debug functions of your Chrome, Chrome browser. For uh, iOS, you don't need to do anything. You'll be able to use uh, Safari and WebView from the beginning. So. Appium see WebView content as another context. So if you just uh, will come to WebView page and we will try to get the source of this page, all you see is just one element that calls WebView and nothing inside. To see the real content of WebView, you need to switch a context. So when you come in there in your test, you just need to get available context to check that you already have WebView context and just switch to WebView context. That's all, but sometimes it makes problems, especially at the beginning, when you're trying to get element, you know the ID, but some some way you cannot get it. Localization. Uh, IPM uh, can get default uh, strings XML for you. So what is strings XML? Any application use this for setting the strings for all the elements or for all the UI elements uh, in your application. So developers use this to keep all the strings in one place, to not uh, put, put it everywhere in the code, just uh, hard code it somewhere. So all the strings of Android and iOS applications are located in strings files. So Appium can get the strings file from the application for Android. For iOS, it cannot be done because iOS compiles the application so it's transform all the files into bytecode. So if you have already built application, you cannot get strings from that for iOS. So if you need to test localization for iOS, you need to copy the directories with strings files before it's compiled, so from the source code. OK, let's speak about yeah, hacks or workarounds, because it's not real hacks. Uh, someti sometimes APM works ideally, but some things you still want to be to do better or faster. Uh, before version 1.8, Appium, the main problem of Appium was be, it was very slow. So all the other frameworks was much faster. And every time you want to discuss with other developers who use other frameworks, they all, will always use this argument that Appium is too slow. From uh, version 1.8 is the current version. Appium become super fast but still you can make it faster. So first, you can use ADB. So ADB is uh, Android uh, bridge uh, protocol that allows you to do any thing with Android device. So it's allow you uh, access to the shell or for main functions. So you can switch to flight mode. You can choose the language on your device. You can upload and download files. For example, you want to upload some photos if your application is using camera or something. Or you can download logs if your application writes some kind of logs. Uh, also can do screenshots, because sometimes Appium can do it very slow or make, uh, can make it like with some kind of problems. So if you face it for like unpopular devices, you can implement your own method for getting screenshots using ADB. It may be more stable and faster. Uh, permissions. So if you ever uh, try to use Android starting from version 6, you saw that during usage of application first time, you see the alerts that ask you, do uh, you want to allow this permission for this application or not? And of course, it may be a real problem for tests because it's asked only first time. So you should put a lot of ifs in your framework or in your test that if alert is shown, then agreed. If alert not shown, then not, uh, they do other actions. Of course, we don't want to do that. So in this case, you can, uh, ah, OK, I'm telling about another slide. Yeah, so I'm telling about, so you can allow your permissions before tests really started. So you can use ATB command just to allow all permissions before you start your test. So. Uh, Android will not ask you about any other permissions. Uh, 
during your test execution. So your test can uh, go very good. And if you need to test your permissions, that if you need to test the functionality that your application uses permission, you just disable the turning off the permissions and you're getting all the permissions back. Also, there's maybe a problem that I face it with one of my projects that application asks for permission when it starts. And this is the blocker for Appium. Because when Appium starts application, it allows you to manipulate with application only when it gets the starting activity. So any Android application uh, defines the starting activity, so some kind of first screen that should be shown. And Appium always wait for that. So if you will see, if Android at this time will show you a notification about permission, Appium will not be able to see the uh, uh, activity behind the, this permission. So Appium will not be able to start. So it will give you just time out that your activity not started. So that's why they implemented the functionality to set non-default application activity and package. So you can wait for uh, your permission request, for example, at the beginning, if you know that uh, application first shows the permission request and only after that the first activity. So you can ask Appium to wait for this activity and only then wait for real first activity of the application. Uh, okay, multiple, multiple executions on one machine. Of course, you don't want to have one machine with one device. So if you're, we're speaking about the, uh, uh, our farm, our device farm locally. So of course, you want to attach as many devices as you want to your local computer that it will be used as a main hub for connection. So in this case, you need to specify a separate uh, Appium execution. At first, Basically, Appium, one Appium server can work only with one device. So you need to start uh, the same amount of Appium servers as many devices you have or you want to run in parallel. And every instance of Appium should have own Appium port, bootstrap port, or system port capability, and Chrome driver port if you're using for a hybrid application or web testing. In other case, it will all will go to same port and you will have problems because one test may affect another one by sending command to several APMs at the same time. Another problem you may uh, face is hiding of keyboard. So sometimes uh, when you're entering uh, text into text field, your device shows the keyboard that hides the half of the screen. But for example, you need to check something under the keyboard, so you need to hide this keyboard. If you're using simulators, uh, you can disable keyboard easily. So it will not be shown at all. So you will use just send keys to send any text, and everything will be good. For iOS, it's impossible to do at all. So you cannot just hide the keyboard. Appium has methods that called hide keyboard, but basically just click Enter button. So if your application accepts Enter button as go to next screen, you will go to next screen. So you will not be able just to hide the keyboard. So on real Android devices, you can cheat a little bit. Uh, you can use ADB to disable all the input uh, methods. So Android will not be able to show any keyboard if it doesn't have any keyboard. OK, alerts. Uh, Appium has several uh, methods uh, that you can use for alert, but they miss the one alert display. So they don't really have this method to check same moment that uh, alerts really display it. In all the cases, if you ask uh, Appium just to deal with alert, it will wait that uh, implicit timeout. So it will wait like 10 or 15 seconds. Even if you don't have this alert, Appium still during this 15 seconds will try to find it. So maybe you will be interested to implement your methods that check the alert just same moment. Do I have alert right now or not without waiting anything? Uh, yes, text label, that's what I already told. So Appium sometimes can get text labels, text for iOS. So then you just ask your developers to create a new category that puts label text into accessibility attribute. Anyone, hint, value, uh, ID, anyone you want to use, you can put it there. WebView. So for WebView, if you're trying to use Appium just with usual method send keys, maybe you will notice that it works very slow. Because it sent one symbol, then check the length of the string. Is it full or not? Then send another symbol. And 
if your machine is not really powerful, it may take a very long time to input long string. So we just implemented it with uh, JavaScript. Appium has the possibility to send any JavaScript for the current screen. So you can use any JavaScript code inside the execute script method and send it uh, like to set value or just click on checkbox or anything else. So same as you did with your Selenium test, you can do, still do with Appium. Okay, let's speak about Gen motion a little bit. At first, first, Gen motion itself, it's uh, Android simulators. This is the one of them. Uh, it gives you some additional possibility, uh, uh, like it has like a little bit more functionality than usual uh, Android Studio simulator emulator. Uh, it's more powerful. It's much closer to real device because it's a full virtual machine with a simulator ri running inside. Also, if you will buy the full version, you will be able to modify GPS coordinates, ID of device, uh, the connections, the network, and so on. So right now, I just downloaded the free version for demo purposes because I'm using Gmotion Cloud. But if you, some way your application requires usage of GPS or something like that, maybe it makes sense to buy Gmotion Simulator because it will be much easier to manipulate than a real device. OK, so let's uh, see the Gmotion implementation in cloud. So they provide you three types of uh, simulators. First one is a local one that you can run on your machine just for test purposes or just for development purposes, doesn't matter. Also, they provide you a virtual machines for clouds. They have both for Google Cloud and for AVD, for Amazon Cloud. Uh, I tried the Google one because it's a little bit easier to use and uh, it gives you some benefits. So this is a Google Cloud console. Here you create just usual virtual machine with the template of Genie Motion, and you can access it same way as you uh, access it on your local machine. So they provide you a special port for uh, ADB connection, so you can just connect it to local ADB, and ADB will sync or Appium will sync that this device connected locally to your machine. So for Appium, it will be completely same as the simulator running on your machine. But actually, it will be running on the cloud, so you're not using the resources. It works much faster, and you can use any amounts and types of the machine prepared. Also, yeah. Google, if you will try it on Google, Google will give you $300 and one year trial for free. So for every new account, if you just join in Google Cloud, you're getting $300 to try all the possibilities. Uh, this simulator costs only half dollar per hour of usage. So if you will turn it off uh, right after your test, probably you will not spend a lot of money. So right now I played for the, with uh, this $300 for like three weeks and I spent only two or three dollars only. Uh, it has some benefits, also it has some disadvantages, like it takes some time to set up it first time. It's not really obvious, so you will have to read a little bit documentation about that. But when you set up it first time, it will work very good. It, uh, they provide you a command line interface on your machine that uh, can work with a uh, cloud machine, so you don't need to implement any API tools or anything. You just use this command line tool to send the command to start machine, to stop machine, or do anything you want with this machine. Uh, the, another disadvantage is that you don't have the possibility to modify Genymotion features uh, from command line. So if you want to set another GPS coordinates or another ID for device, you should use UI only to set, set this for simulators. But you can create any amount of simulators if you want with any setup and then use it in your test when you need it. So you don't need to change your settings all the time. You can have like million machines at the same time. If they don't work, they don't use your money. You have shared access, so you can create a lot of de uh, devices, it's the same in cloud, and everybody can use them. It's fast. It's really fast. I even faced the problem with Appium, with your uh, UI Automator 2 driver. Uh, it cannot work so fast sometimes. So 
Yeah, <laughs> the problem I already posted in our Slack channel uh, that if your tests work so fast with uh, your UI Automator 2, the proxy server that they install inside the device sometimes can stop working because it cannot work with so many requests per second. So in this case, I'm looking for a good solution right now. Uh, I definitely don't want to make my tests slow. And another one small hack about uh, gcloud. Uh, if you will just press the stop button on your virtual machine, it will take about two minutes to shut it down. But if you will send a DB command to shut down the machine from the inside, it will take five or 10 seconds. So it will save you a huge amount of time if you run tests in, like from, from di different instances with different instances. Another topic I want to speak today is just small advertisement of uh, Allure reports. Uh, maybe some of you already seen that, or maybe not. It's just one of the implementation of test reports. It was implemented by Yandex company, Russian guys. It's very simple and very nice because it provides you all the features you need. So. Uh, it helps you to shorten common defect lifecycle because it's provide, when you get any error with uh, uh, Allure report, you can get everything you need from, for, from the beginning. So you don't need to go to logs, you don't need to debug anything. It can collect all the information for you. Uh, you have failure separation into bugs and broken tests, so you can easily understand where's the problem. Is it your test or it's a bug? It supports all types of attachments. So during your test execution, you can attach any type of the file. So you can attach screenshots, you can attach log files, you can attach APM output, for example. Uh, you can, uh, it supports uh, BDD frameworks. So if you have Cucumber, you, you will just put one uh, library APM Cucumber, and it will work from the beginning. So you don't need to implement anything. You even don't need to mark steps. It will automatically get all your steps and put in the report. It has uh, integration with TMS and bug tracking. So if you mark some kind of test uh, that you already have a bug in this test, it will be shown in report, and it will not show the red status anymore because you already have bug about that. It has timelines, and it supports parallel execution. I will show you right now. It's on an example. I'm just telling about all the features. So you can use it for parallel executions. You can use it with uh, execution history because if you're using it on uh, Jenkins or you're using is with SimCity, it will support the history of execution. So it will know all the history of the test execution. So you will be able to see how flaky your test or how unstable your test is. So let's try a demo. If you want, you can try it on your phone. I will also show it here. This is a demo provided by uh, developers of uh, Allure. So they have all the types of tests here right now. So this is the main screen of Allure reports. So it shows that we have 21 test cases. This is a presentation of passed tests. This is our history trend. So every execution, it shows that we have like more greens here. We have uh, less here. Uh, it uh, shows you your suits if you're using not BDD framework. Or if you use BDD framework, it will be shown like features and storage here. So, yeah, you can see uh, everything separated into your features and stories. Also, you can add any environment information here. You can use links. You can use uh, information about your device that were used for execution. So you can provide all the information needed for developer to debug a problem. So let's take a look closer to our bugs or our statuses. So. This is a simple uh, way, uh, simple uh, scenario, the green one. So we have steps here, so we're doing some. Can, can you see how I need to make it bigger? Yeah, it's like, it's like better. So you have steps here. If you have any attachments, you can also see here. So you can put any attachment here inside the step. So you'll be able to track or reproduce anything you uh, want to follow the step, steps to reproduce your bug. For example, you, you see that on the third steps uh, you got some kind of failure. You can put all information how to reproduce these steps here in attachments. So developer will be able to reproduce your bug by himself 
You don't need to come and show to, to him. You can provide all the information here. Also, you can uh, mark your test, skip it. Yeah. So if you want to skip uh, some tests some way, it will not be red, so it will be gray, so you don't need to pay attention to that. Also, it supports uh, unknown or, uh, yeah. Uh, unknown status, so some way you like working right now on the test and it's got into the test execution, so you mark like uh, test in, in the progress like unknown or like skip it. You can customize these uh, names by yourself. Uh, so it also will not be red, so you don't, don't need to spend time on that. So you know that your problems is a red test case. So purple is something you can deal later. Also, as I told, it supports the uh, integration with uh, any uh, bug tracking or CMS. So if you attach any Jira ticket or like any CMS ticket to your test case, it will be shown here. So you will know that why, why, why it's failing. Yeah, they don't have Jira attached to this report, so it's shown nothing right now. Same with test case. So if you want to see the real test case, where did you get this test from? or your manual team doesn't like how this test case looks and they want to use their test case in any CMS system, you can attach the link to CMS. For, yes, for a failure test, it will provide you all the output you need. So it will be stack trace here, the error message, and all the outputs that you attach it, so you will be able to see why it's happened or what's in your log files. Yeah, and yeah, skip to all of this one. And broken test, yeah. If you mark some kind of type of errors as not product errors, but framework errors, this uh, test will be marked by different colors, so you will also know that it's not a bug, it's a problem in your framework. So you don't need to send it to developers for investigation. Uh, Allure also multi-platform, so they have implementation of their library for almost all the languages. Uh, yeah, so you can find it also on Kameta IO Allure, or you can just Google by Allure reports for, uh, keyword. You will find all the documentation, it's all in English, it's very simple. Very simple installation for Jenkins and SimCity. They have their plugins, so you also don't need to set up anything by yourself. All you need is to specify the folder where do you put your Allure results. That's all. Everything will be beautiful from the scratch as, as you want it. Okay, I think I finished on that. Any questions? Guys, do you have any questions? How, how do you use Allure in your test? You have to. Uh, okay, so I'm not using Java, but uh, usually it's just one library. So if you're using any BDD system like Cucumber or anything, you just uh, adding this library into your project and that's all. Everything will be done automatically. Uh, if you're not using BDD system, then you need to add a special calls to Allure library like start step and stop step. So then Allure will know all about your steps. If you need to add attachments, you're telling Allure, attach, and you're getting the contents that you want to attach. So it will put all this information into XML files in some folder, and then a plugin for Jenkins will be able to build the HTML wrapper from this folder. So from you, you just need to say where to start, what to put inside, and where to stop, that's all. If you're using BDD, you don't need to do anything. I never work with Serenity, but I just know that it's the simple one and it can do everything I need. Because I know that I can send this report to my developers and they will be able to find bugs without me. So I don't need to participate in this process, so it simplifies the process. I can send it to my managers and they will get all the information. Oh, I will show you. Oh. All the information about, so all the statistics about the uh, uh, problems right now, and also timelines, so how long does it take to execute which test? So you can see here that several tests were executed parallel, some was executed earlier. 
So if you have only one execution at a time, it just will be one line with separating to test, and you will know which uh, uh, test takes which time, or how, how much time did it take. Uh, also, 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 all. Also, if you want to contact me, you can scan, the, scan this barcode or QR code, or you can use any of these links, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, anywhere you want. Feel free to contact me to ask the questions. Uh, also, we have uh, Slack. So if you have any problems with Appium, you have any questions, feel free to join our Slack by this link or by this QR code. You can send invitations to yourself into Slack. In, Slack, in our Slack channel. You can ask any questions there, and our small Singaporean Appium community will try to help you to solve this problem. OK. So thank you very much. I think that's all. Siam, uh, do Ah, yes, sure. Yeah, what happened is that uh, in Honaya Bias, uh, we have to testing. OK. Uh, we have to list on all the contacts first, and then after that, we have to choose which contact you want to go. But what happened after that, we don't see the real estate ever. Because we run tests on Android and iOS. Yes. In Android, we can see the full HTML page. Yes. But in iOS, after we switch to the contacts, we didn't see anything, just HTML with the plain element. Uh, are you sure you switch into the right context? Because sometimes on iOS, I saw that it creates two web view contexts. So maybe you just switch into the wrong web view context. So you first, you need to get the full list of the context, check to which one you're switching. If you're switching to the right context, then you just need to investigate it with your developers. Because for me, it always worked with a hybrid application, because Lazada application was a hybrid. So we had a native part, we had a web view part. So switch context always worked for both Android and iOS. So, uh, so you have multiple contexts sometimes due to some reason? Yes, yes. So maybe it's an issue made by your developers. Maybe it's some kind of uh, iOS issue. With iOS, we have a lot of problems. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but you just need to investigate a little bit more. So also, you can like post your problem in Slack. We can try to yeah, yeah. help you investigate it. OK? Uh, yes? Uh, he was first, sorry. Yeah. What's your take on testing mobile uh, on device, actual real device, or uh, on uh, virtual machines? Uh, okay, in Lazada, we mostly use it only simulators. So, because um, our application was pretty stable, we had uh, less than 0.1 percent of crashes of our user uh, for our users. So, we didn't care about the models of the devices because. It's, so a very small problem of crashes. So we was able to use simulators all this. Let's just say if I want to start doing uh, automation testing on mobile browsers, not native or hybrid apps. It doesn't matter. It, for you, it, if you're using a mobile browser, it will be completely the same for simulators and real devices. And of course, you cannot have like 10 different devices in real. It's too expensive. So for, for mobile browsers, I, I believe it will be much easier to use simulators. Oh, sorry, your question. Uh, how do you run the uh, iOS now Android scripts parallelly for the single click? So, sorry, how do I run Android and iOS? Yeah, I wasn't parallelly on the run. OK, so it's, uh, it's just different instances of test framework. So I'm not running this really in, the, like in, in one test execution. So one test execution is for Android, one test execution for Android. Uh, but uh, I have uh, like initial parameters that uh, when I'm starting Appium, my framework knows which we, with which platform I will uh, work. So it just loads the page objects for Android or for iOS, and everything else is the same. So all the I'm using Cucumber, so all the feature files, all the step definitions, completely the same for Android and iOS. It just loads the page objects for Android or for iOS at the start. That's all. Have you set up the local device form? Uh, as I told, we use it simulators. So we had just several servers where we run simulators, and it was more than enough for our purposes. Uh, how do you handle the dynamic uh, letters of, uh, for example, the device and then how do you handle that? Uh, so with simulators, you don't have the, this problem, because every time you start your test, you start the simulator. When you stop the test, you stop the simulator. So it's restarted all the time, so there are no problems like that. 
with real device, of course, you will have it. Especially with Androids, the ADB likes to hang up after some time. So you need to restart your device or reattach your device. So it brings a lot of problems. So if you're thinking about local device farm, maybe you can also think about real device farm, but in cloud. So maybe for you it may be cheaper in uh, like time spending or resources and so on. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the, <laughs> if you learned today anything interesting, I'm glad. If not, <laughs> also okay. <laughs> so uh, join us on other events. Uh, I hope we will soon have events not only about APM but in, uh, about test automation in general. So we will try to sw switch the context. If you have anything to tell, if you have any good experience, if you have anything to share, just reach us in uh, Slack. So we will be happy to give you a chance to present something by yourself. If your co company wants to or can handle such meetups in your office, also feel free to offer to Siam. Yeah, he's main organizer. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. We still have 30 minutes for Network, and if you want, if you have any questions privately, you can come and I will try to ask, answer. If you want to drink coffee or water, feel free. <laughs> uh, thanks for it. Uh, thank you, Sir, for, uh, for sponsoring this event.